وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ If that's, all of this wasn't bad enough, the Messenger himself وسلم, speaks to Allah directly, يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورَ This nation of mine, no doubt about it, they took this Qur'an, هَذَا Quran. even there, there's a beauty in even the use of the word هَذَا here, as opposed to ذَلِكَ Like when you start reciting Qur'an in the beginning, أَلِفْ لَا مِيم ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ Here Allah does not say ذَلِكَ Quran. He says هَذَا Quran. هَذَا لِلْقَرِيبِ This Qur'an was right here, it was right in front of you, and you still wouldn't take it seriously. And the Messenger on Judgment Day وسلم, complains, this nation of mine took this Qur'an, not that Qur'an, this Qur'an, one of the other rhetorical benefits, badaghi benefits of the word hadha in this ayah is on judgment day, it will be like the Qur'an will be brought as a witness. You know how in court, you bring the witness, and then the witness is, or the evidence is brought, and you point at the evidence and say, this is the evidence that that guy is a criminal. So the, ev- the evidence itself will be the Qur'an on judgment day. Your case is bad enough as it is. And then the Qur'an is brought as the witness, and the attorney making, bringing the evidence is the messenger wasallam, And he's pointing at the Qur'an and saying, these people, this nation of mine, they took this Qur'an, mahjura, they took it mahjuran. Hajara, they say in Arabic, taraka shay'an. Oh, uh, it's in hajartahu hajran, yani taraktahu, aghfaltahu. You made something forgotten. You completely ignored something. You left it way behind. I think even the Urdu speakers here know the word hijra. Everybody knows the word hijra. To migrate something. The, the ayah doesn't even say matrukan. Matrukan means left behind. Mahjuran means left way behind. They didn't just leave the Qur'an, they left it way behind. They, had, they weren't even close. They just migrated away, away, away from it. And I, I want to remind myself and all of you today, the character that the Qur'an wants from us, if we are away from that, even though we're reciting the Qur'an, it's still a hijrah from the Qur'an. It's still a hijrah from the Qur'an. We're migrating away from the Qur'an, if we're reciting it, and we're not seeing any change in our character. That's, that's the quality of Bani Israel. And that's why this, this by the way, is Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th, Surah of the Qur'an. It's not a long surah, so you can read it in translation when you go home. But what's remarkable about this surah, this is the middle of it. When you get to the end of it, the whole ending is about what kind of character is required from a Muslim. What should the personality of a Muslim look like? Why is that mentioned? When the Messenger complained they abandoned the Qur'an. Because the person who does not abandon the Qur'an has a different kind of personality. Their personality is different, their character is different. Their actions are different. Even who they hang out with is different. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا In the same surah, when they walk by useless conversation, they walk by in a dignified way, they don't get entangled in it. They, they, they stay away from useless company even. It affects every part of their personality. That's the abandonment of the Qur'an. I feel that the ummah is becoming, and you and I are becoming more and more and more guilty of, and we have to be worried about it. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, yes. Barawz billahi min ash rajim I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. Waman ahsana kawlan min man da'a ila Allahi wa amila salihan wa qala inna li min al-muslimin. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and acts righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims? Hazi sabili adu ila la ala basiratin ana umani tabani wasuba ana lahi wama ana min al mushrikin. This is my way I invite to God by perception. I and whoever follows me, and glory be to Allah, for I am not among the mushriks, that is, the idolaters. <clears throat> ya you all lazina amanu ittakulla wa kunu ma'aswadikin. Oh, you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest, those who are truthful. Uh, so, thank you all once again for coming to witness this program. We are going to have a discussion about the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan. And that is what we are here to discuss. Uh, so, peace be upon you, uh, Fatima Chin. Uh, hope great. Yeah, thank you. Share.
kindly share. Kwame Idi, salam. Abdul Quddus, salam. I see you all. Adam Tahir, Nazir NSC, Hamza Hussein, Muti, Muti Hussein. Yeah, I see you all. Thank you all for coming once again. Yes. Uh huh. So we are going to discuss about the month of Ramadan. Uh, I've done I've done topics on this uh, several times. Uh, I have about three topics I did already concerning Ramadan, or about four is on my YouTube channel, and also my Facebook page. Uh, but today I'm I'm going to go through some of the controversial aspects of what people keep discussing and finding it uh, like a confusing. And then I'll be going through some of the questions I've been asked, you know, during the the time Ramadan started till now, so that we can eliminate the doubts, the misconceptions concerning what the things that people don't actually understand when it comes to Ramadan, right? Uh -huh. So we are here to see uh, that aspect, right? <clears throat> yeah, salam, Abu Bakr Muhammad Tijan. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the, the main uh, misconception that people have, uh, I put Quran chapter 2, verse 185, right? Uh, let's see what, what the Quran says concerning uh, the month of Ramadan. Uh, then I will share the screen and then we see what the Quran says concerning that, right? Uh -huh. So let me share the screen. Hey, salam. I share the screen and we see what the Quran says, right? Uh, I'm getting the response that the video is lagging. Uh, please give me a signal if in case the video is lagging because I, I checked my internet before starting. It should be okay. Yeah, you can give me a signal in case the video is lagging uh, because I got I got this issue fixed before starting. So I, I don't expect it to, to be having these issues today, inshallah. <clears throat> so... Uh, Yes, Quran chapter 2, verse 185. Quran chapter 2, verse 185. Uh, Vora Vora says it is lagging. It is lagging. Okay, Hamza Hussain says loud and clear. But uh, let me know in case my voice doesn't break up. If my voice doesn't break up, we can move on. You know, the video doesn't really, really matter, right? Uh -huh. So let me know. If if my voice is all good, no lagging, fine. But forget about the video lagging, right? And that's all I want to know. If my voice keeps going consistently without any interruptions, then I think we are good to go. Yeah, so just... Uh, give me the heads up so that I can I can just continue, right? Okay, so Quran chapter 2, verse 185. God says, Shaharu Ramadan al-lazi unzila fihi al-Quran hudan lil-nas. Then he says, Wa bayinati min al-huda wal-furqan. Right? Uh -huh. So that is the first part of the verse we are going to see. So God says, the month of Ramadan uh, the month of Ramadan is that in which the Quran was revealed, right? It came that meaning the Quran was revealed. It came down to the Prophet. Then God says, as guidance for mankind, Udan Linas, right? So apart from being a guidance for mankind, then God says, as evidences, Wabayinat, that is proofs, that is clear evidences, evidences, Minal Huda, that is. It, it serves as the evidences of the what guidance because the Quran itself is to serve as a guidance for mankind. Quran chapter 45, verse 11, God says, Haza this is guidance. 
the Quran you are using. You are holding a book. And then the book, inside the book, God is telling you, Haza Huda. When you open Quran chapter 45, verse 11, Haza Huda. This is guidance. It's just like I will tell you, this is, uh, uh, this is, uh, what, what can I say? Uh, you are looking for Shrine, and I said, this is Shrine. This is Shrine. This. Yeah, this is Shrine. Or there is why. Uh -huh. So if you are looking for the guidance, God says, Haza Huda. Quran chapter 45, verse 11. So, Sharu Ramadan al Lazi Unzila Fiel Quran Huda Lid Nas. Wabayinati min al Huda wal Furqan. So, the Quran as a guidance for mankind is to serve as a evidences of the guidance and then the al Furqan. That is the criterion. So, when we say al Furqan, you find it in Quran chapter 25, verse 1. Al Furqan is something. In English, we say the criterion, criterion, something which helps to distinguish between right and wrong, right? Uh -huh. So that is what the Quran is to serve us, a criterion, al-Furqan. Before the Quran, God has sent previous uh, scriptures whereby you find also the al-Furqan in them, like the book of Moses and so on and so forth, which can be used to serve as a book of judgment, right? So that is the purpose of the Quran. So the verse continues by saying, Faman shahida min shar. So it started by defining Sharu Ramadan, and we can only find it on the Hijr calendar. We have a calendar that we can find. In the whole world, there's only one calendar you can find the month of Ramadan on it. And that is the one on the Hijr calendar, right? Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, if you check the year 1443 or 44, if you go back in time, you trace the times. Yes, it goes till the time of the Prophet. Uh -huh. So God says, For my shahid amin sharif, well, whoever among you witnesses the man, huh? so the verb, uh, the, the pronoun attached to the verb, it says, Fal yes umhu, meaning it should uh, practice the, the fasting, the abstinence in it. So it uses a masculine pronoun that fast it or do the abstinence, right? Yes, um. so it is for the entire month, but it has a number of counting that you can count from know the beginning and the ending of it. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So then he says, Woman can a maridan aw ala suffering, and whoever is sick or upon a journey, like suffer, traveling. Then God says, for it that to men ayamin ukhar. Then a number of other days. When we say idda, it's a period. A idda is a period of something, a number of something. Just like when you are divorcing the women, you also divorce them by their period, like their number. You count something. Quran chapter 65, verse 1 to verse 4, it stated there. Idda. Right? Then he says, for it that to men ayamin ukhar. It didn't say uh, you should do it in another month. No, God never said do it in, an, an, in the next month or another month. No, <laughs> the Quran is clear, and I'll come to that and I'll explain to you. For it that to mean ayam and ukhar means a number of other days, a number of other days. Remember, it takes days to make a month, it takes days to make a month. Uh -huh. So, the, a number of other days, but it's still within the month you're fasting, right? Uh -huh. Then God says, God intends for you what is what? Is. He does not intend hardship for you. In order to complete the period, because month is a period. Month is a number of days, right? So in order for you to complete, he doesn't want to put any hardship upon you. You understand the hardship is saying, oh, when you are sick, you have to fast. When you are traveling, you have to fast. That becomes a hardship, right? Uh -huh. So he doesn't want to put any hardship on you. So when in the, the days that you're traveling during that month, don't, don't fast. The days that you are sick during that month, don't fast. When you get better, then you do the other days. For it to mean ayamin ukhar, ahead of you. So let's say if I'm traveling for three days, I don't need to fast. May it be I'm traveling by aeroplane. I got up from morning here, going to Ghana, and I get up there maybe in the morning again. I'll be confused. 
You understand? So I don't need to fast. And again, let's say I'm traveling by road and it's a long journey. I'll get exhausted. I need to drink water. I need to rest. I need to eat food. You understand? So I'm exempted. Or maybe I'm sick. I'm having a headache today. I can't fast because if I fast, I worsen my scenario. Whereby I'm, I'm sick in such a way that I need medication or I need something to take in. So I'm exempted. So for it that to me, ayam in Ukhar means if I'm sick for three days, I, then I can fast the other days in front of me till the period, the month ends. You understand? Uh -huh. This is God's words, not my words. So listen carefully. Whichever scholar tells you you have to make up for the misdeeds, tell him to show you clearly in the Arabic context where it says you have to make up for misdeeds. Simple. Uh -huh. Yeah, the boss, Amadi, you. you're welcome. Salam. So then God continued by saying, When I say Allahu Kabir, I'm magnifying God. That is enough. You don't need to say Allahu Akbar. No. Allahu Tukabirullah is to say Takbir of God, meaning Allahu Akbar is not used. You have to say Allahu Kabir. Right? Uh -huh. So then he says, Allah Mahadakum. You have to magnify God over what he has guided you or for what he has guided you. Yes, Salam Mekra. Aha. So then, then he says, Wala Allahkum Tashkurun, so that you may be grateful or you may be what? Perhaps you will be what? Thankful. So the verses I just read, the verse I just read concerning Quran chapter 2, verse 185, is talking about the month of Quran. Right? Yeah, he's talking about the month of Ramadan, that is Shadow Ramadan. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So we, we've seen the verse, what he's talking about. But there's, there's something I want us to, to, to grasp here. Right? Uh -huh. I, uh, there's something I want us to grasp. Now, before we go to what I want us to understand, if you go up to 16, verse 89, God said, told the Prophet, Right? And I'm going to put the verse so that you, you, you get to see uh, or to understand what I'm trying to say. Within the verse, you get where God is telling the Prophet, uh, Let me see. To put the verse here. Yeah. So within the verse, then it says, وَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ and we have revealed to you the book, Al-Kitab, you see it? Tibiyanan, uh, which comes from the word Bayan. Tibiyanan li kulli shay'in. It does, it, it's not say to Bayina. It's not talking to the prophet that he should clarify. So he says the book, the book itself, is Tibiyanan li kulli shay'in. It's a clarification, elucidation, exposition for all things, meaning concerning Islam, right? It's not saying it is all things concerning how to use your television, how to you drive your car, how to go to, you understand? No. So he says, لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Then he says, وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةً وَبُشْرَى لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ So it's to serve as a guidance and mercy and good news for the what? Muslims. And Muslims and Muslims alone. It's not saying for anybody or for everybody. A Muslim is somebody who has submitted to one God. You submit yourself, you surrender yourself to God. That is a Muslim. So the book is to serve as a clarification for all things. So including Ramadan, including Salat, including Zakat, including anything about Islam. Because Quran chapter 5 verse 3 says, Aliyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum, wa atmumtu alaykum nimati, wa raditu lakum Islam adina. Today I have completed your, uh, Aliyawma akmaltu lakum dinakum, I have completed your religion for you. Wa atmumtu alaykum nimati, and then completed my blessing upon you. Waraditu lakum Islam adina, and have approved Islam, al Islam as a religion for you, right? 
So that is why he sent the messenger, Quran chapter 61, verse 9, who bil huda wa dinil haq. You see, he says he is the one who has sent his messenger with the, with the guidance and the religion of truth because there are false religions also out there. Right? So God decided to use the word haq to differentiate between the false religion and the truthful religion. So the true, true religion can be found in the Quran, whilst the false religions are found in other man-made mazhabs, doctrines, right? Uh, so Quran chapter 16, verse 89, clearly tells us that God has revealed the book as a clarification for all things. So now we are using the book now. So what do we have to do? We have to find our answers concerning Ramadan in the Quran, not outside the Quran. Pay attention. Good. Uh -huh. So... Since we have addressed chapter 16, verse 89, again, I take you to Quran chapter 24, verse 18, to show you what God sees. If Where should we find the clarification from? And who has to clarify this issue for us? Is it somebody else or is it God himself? So that is what I'm here to help you to find out. So Quran chapter 24, verse 18, and I put the verse on the screen. Then we see what the verse says concerning Quran. So he says, وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ And God clarifies the verses to you, for God is what? Omniscient and wise. So God is the one clarifying the verses, because he has already sent a book as a clarification for all things. So, but who did the clarification? It is God clarifying the verses. You, you see he says, وَيُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمُ الْآيَاتِ You see, ayat, the, the verses. He clarifies all the verses in the Quran. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Because he is omniscient and wise. So his knowledge is he's, he's all-knowing and he is wise. So he is befitting to clarify everything for us. Right? So that is Quran chapter 24, verse 18. And again, I take you to last but the least, Quran chapter 6, verse 105, to make it easy for you to understand that it has nothing to do with Muhammad clarifying the Quran. It is actually God himself who has to clarify the Quran to us, right? So Quran chapter 6, verse 105, and again, I share the screen, then you see the verse of what it says, right? So Quran chapter 6, uh, let me share the screen, Quran chapter 6, verse 105. So it says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُسَرِّفُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِيَكُولُوا دَرَسْتَهُ وَلِنُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ So he says, likewise, or thus, have we conducted huh? the word sort of tasrif, uh, you know, to, to, to conduct, to meaning to inflect the verses. So thus have we what? Conducted the verses. The verses we are reading in the Quran. God made it like that way. Huh? Then God says, the rasta. In order for them to see that you, Muhammad, or you, Shu'aim, have studied. Because the verse has been conducted in such a way that you take a verse here, explain something here, you go here, it's explained there in different chapters, in different verses. You see? So then God says, who? Because where will you find the verses? In the Al-Kitab, the book. So, who is a masculine pronoun. Who? In order for us to clarify it, that is the book or the Quran, because you find all these verses in the Quran. If it was directly referring to the verses, after saying al ayat, he will say, Walunubayinu ha. You understand? To clarify ha as a, ma a feminine pronoun. But he used a masculine pronoun to complete the issue of the book entirely, meaning, God is the one to clarify it, which is the Quran. For people who know. So it takes responsibility of knowledge. You need to possess knowledge in order to grasp what God is clarifying to you. I hope you understand the point, right? So that is Quran chapter 6, verse 105. Huh? So this is why Quran chapter 17, verse 36 says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge. Right? Ah, so salam ma wiya nagaka. If you don't have knowledge on something, don't pursue it. Don't do it. Ah, don't do it. Even if it is do not trap telling you, don't take it. You see, uh huh. 
So these three verses I gave you, Quran chapter 16, verse 89, and then Quran chapter 6, verse 105, and Quran chapter 24, verse 18, is to build or set up your mind to the time I'm, I'm going to, uh, to the topic I'm going to delve into. So that you see that the clarification comes from God and everything in the Quran has been clarified and then it is God who has to do his own clarification, not the prophet, not Muhammad. So that is why Quran chapter 75 verse 16 to 19 says, mm -hmm. Then he says, Thumma inna alayna bayanahu. You see, so God says, do not hasten with your tongue. Do not move your tongue in order to, to hasten with it. Right? You see. Then he says, Inna alayna jama'ahu wa Qur'anahu. Indeed, upon us is the gathering of it and then the reading of it. Fa'iza Qur'anahu fattabi Qur'ana. And when you we read it, then follow its reading. Just like if I'm reading the Qur'an here, yours is just to follow what God is saying and then pursue what he has told you. Then he says, Inna, summa inna alayna bayanahum. Then upon us, indeed, upon us is the clarification. So the clarification of the Quran is not upon Muhammad, neither is it upon your ignorant scholars, the mushriks. We don't need you. All the garbages they wrote to explain. We don't need that. <laughs> so God explains his own book. He clarifies his own book. I've given you the evidence. So now let's delve into the Quran to get the answers we need. So before then, you see people talking about the lunar calendar and the solar calendar. And then they will tell you we have to use luni solar calendar. Nothing of that sort exists in the Quran. There is nothing called lun luni solar calendar. Neither does it say solar calendar. It doesn't exist. How about lunar calendar? So let's see what it means. When we say lunar calendar, it is what? Relating to, or we can say it's associated with the moon. You understand the calculation you do based on the moon by timing, uh, a timing device you use based on the moon. But when we say solar calendar, what is this about? Solar calendar is relating to the what? Sun. Uh, the sun, using the sun as your timing device. That is that's what we call solar calendar. Now, how did people come to with the concept of saying that, oh, we have to follow luni solar calendar or solar luni calendar? Where did they get the concept from? When you investigate, you find out that they have been indoctrinated to follow a source other than the Quran. And I'm going to erase that uh, doubt today, right? Uh, before I go to the Quran, even according to the Bible, the Old Testament, uh, the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, Chapter 104, verse 19, the verse says, he appointed the moon for seasons. He appointed, it means God appointed the moon, the kamar, for seasons, so that you know the seasons. Now, let me make it easy here. When you take the issue of the moon, when we say seasons, right? A period of the year marked by special events or activities in some aspect or field, right? Right? Or we can say one of the natural periods in which the year is divided. Mm? So when you take uh, the Bible, Psalms, Old Testament, Psalms chapter 104, verse 19. Now I'm only using this as a what? as a reference point just to, to, to build my argument to a certain instance, right? Good. So it has been there even in the past that God appointed the moon for seasons to, to be, be help people to mark events with it. Now let's come back to the Quran. Why do people say they are, there's a loony and solar calendar? Where did they get the concept from? It's a misunderstanding and an inter interpolation in the verses of God without understanding them. So first of all, they quote, they, you hear that most of them will quote chapter 55, verse 5. And I'm going to help you. Right? Chapter 55, verse 5. And let's see what the verse says. Quran chapter 55, verse 5. Does it talk about lunar solar calendar? The answer is no. 
Does it talk about solar calendar? The answer is no. Right? Good. So Quran chapter 55 verse 5. Remember, if you take the verses by context, it starts from verse 1, right? Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Quran, Khalaq al-Insan, Allam al-Bayan. Then he says what? Ash-shamsu wal-kamar bi husban. Do you see? Ash-shamsu wal-kamar bi husban. The sun and the moon by what? Calculation, by reckoning. So if I'm using the sun and the moon by reckoning, doesn't necessarily mean he's talking about the solar calendar, lunar calendar, or a timing device for the calendar. The answer is no. Because when you continue the verse, to see the next thing he's talking about, he's talking about what? The stars and the what? The shajar, the trees. So he says, when najim was shajar, then he says, yes, Judan. Make they make obeisance to God, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, when you take a shams wal kamar bihusban, yes, we can use the shams for calculation and we can use the moon for calculation, but who has to tell us where we have to use them? Automatically, we have to ask God, right? Where we need to use these two entities he has created for our calculation. True or false? Yes. You see how it goes. So God now has to tell us where we have to use it. It is not you forming your own misconception and saying there's a loony solar calendar or there's a solar calendar. No. That is your own concussion what you have concocted for yourselves so god has given us a book of a clarification for all things so he has to now tell us are we supposed to use lunar solar calendar lunar solar solar calendar or solar calendar alone or lunar calendar alone we need to ask god so that he will help us in this aspect right good so now what happens when we go back to god when he says was shamsu wal kamar uh, be whose band, he says the sun and the moon by what? Reckoning. Or we can use the word by calculation, right? So now, when we go back to God, we want to understand how are we going to use this aspect. And again, before I go to, uh, to break it down so that God will show us which of the uh, two or how are we going to use the two for calculation. I'm going to go to another verse which is in Quran chapter 6, verse 96. That is Surah Sulla and Am, chapter 6, verse 96. Let me share the screen so that we see what the verse says in the, in the on, on that. So Quran chapter 6, verse 96. He says, Falikul isbah Wajala Layla Sakanan Was Shamsa Wal Kamara Husbana. Then he says, Zalika Takadirul Azizul Ali. He is the cleaver, right? A cleaver of the morning. Then he says, What? Wajala Layla Sakana. So he made the night for rest. Then he says, Washamsa wal kamar husbana. Then he the sun and the moon in calculation or in what? Reckoning. Then he says, Zalika takdirul azizul alim. So that is the estimation of the Almighty, the all knowing. That is the omniscient. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So we can still see the shams and the kamar. For calculation or by recording or in, in calculation or in recording. But how are we supposed to use both of them? In which ways? I'm going to help you to come to that conclusion. But let's move on to the point I'm heading to. So now we want to see the shams. Whenever God mentions shams in the Quran, according to God, he, attributes, he gives the moon and uh, the sun a female attribute. And he gives the moon a masculine attribute attribute 
This is how to come by understanding the grammatical aspect of the Quran, right? So I quoted Quran chapter 55 verse 5. It talks about Ashams wal Kamar bi husban. Quran chapter 6 verse 90 says, and he says, Ashams wal Kamar husbana. So now we are going to decipher these two to understand. To understand, uh, thank you, Suleiman uh, Abdul Rahman. We are going to decipher these two to understand their positions and why, which one God clarifies for us to use. And I'm going to help you today, inshallah. Right? Good. Aha. Uh -huh. So now I take you to Quran chapter 91, verse 1 to verse 4. Quran chapter 91, verse 1 to verse 4. Then I will share the screen. Then we see what the verses say concerning uh, that. I hope this part will not take more of my time, right? Uh -huh. So that I can get to explain to people why we are supposed to use only the what? The, the lunar calendar and not the solar calendar or the month. So God says, Washamsi, Waduhaha, Walakamari. Iza talaha, wan nahari iza jallaha, wal layli iza yagshaha. The verse is wa shamsi wa duhaha. By the sun and its forenoon. When we say duhaha, it's a forenoon, like in the morning, before uh, when the sun is rising up, right? When the sun is rising up after sunrise, sun has risen up. When it's rising, going to the, the noon. That is what we call duaha. Right? So duaha, just like when you go to Surah to duha Right? Uh -huh. So by the sun and its forenoon. Now you see the duaha, the ha at the end is a feminine pronoun. It's not a masculine pronoun. It is a feminine pronoun to denote, to denote, uh, denote that the sun is a feminine, has a feminine attribute. Right? The sun has a feminine attribute. Unlike the moon, the sun has a feminine attribute. Then it continues by saying, Wal kamari is a talaha. So the kamar is following the sun. Because sun comes out when sun rises before the moon also comes in. So sun rises before the, sun, the moon comes in. So wal kamari is a talaha. When it follows it, the ha denotes the sun. The ha here, the masculine, uh, the feminine pronoun here is representing the sun because that is the main subject. Then it says, Wa nahari is a jalaha. Now, do you see the interesting part here? Then the concept of nahar comes in the picture. God has mentioned the sun separately, and now he has mentioned what? Nahar separately because they are not the same thing. The day is different from the sun and the night is different from the moon. They are not the same thing. Some people are misunderstanding this concept, thinking that since it's mentioned shams, that means day. Since it's mentioned kamar, that means night. No, the moon can even appear in the daytime, in the morning time, in the daytime. Yes, <laughs> it has nothing to do with the night. Moon doesn't only appear in the nighttime. Moon appears even in the daytime. But the sun has its own position that it has to appear in the daytime, right? But it has nothing to do with the day because we have sometimes the weather without a sun. You don't see the sun the whole day, but there's a daytime. I hope you are following my point. There's a difference between day and night and then the moon and the sun. There's a big difference. And I'm going to help you to decipher that. So then he says, and the moon when it follows and the day when it reveals when Nahari is a jallaha, it reveals. It reveals what? It reveals ha, it. That is the sun, a feminine pronoun. Because sometimes the day can cover. You see, sometimes the daytime, it can cover the sun. You don't see the sun. You'll be looking for the sun. You don't see it. But you know it's somewhere there hiding. So the day will cover it. So it is the day which reveals it the sun to make you see the sun shining oh that is the now it's daytime yes aha uh -huh. then the verse 4 says what lately is a yagusha ha so night times the night it covers the sun when night comes it covers it hides the sun away 
So day is different from night and night is different from moon and moon is different from sun. They are all not the same. And I will help you to understand this so that the Ramadan month can be easy for you. That we are using the lunar calendar and not the solar calendar. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. So now, I've taken you to the Quran chapter 91 to break down, to explain to you the position of the sun, the position of the moon, the position of the day and night. They are all different things. They are not the same. Salam, Brazil. Thank you very much, Muhammad Qaddafi. Thank you. I appreciate that. Aha. Uh -huh. So now I'm taking you to Quran chapter 36, verse 40. That is Surah to Yasin, verse 40. Right? And I'm going to break down for you to understand the difference between the sun, the moon, the night, and day. They are not all the same thing. You understand it very simple. It is not a complicated topic. I'm just only here to help those who are saying we have to use solar calendar, a loony solar calendar. No, there's nothing like that. <laughs> I'm going to help them to understand. Good. So I take you to Quran chapter 36, verse 40. God is now telling us concerning these four entities, that these four uh, things we are talking about. He says, La, he says, La Shamsu. Then he says, Yam Bagi Laha. An Tudurika Le Kamara. That is Kamar. Wala Lailu Sabikun Nahar. Wa Kulun Fi Falakin Yesbahun. God says, The sun. Uh, will not what? Yambagi laha. So it's talking about the sun here. Chapter 36, verse 40. So he used the, 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 the pronoun, a feminine pronoun concerning the sun. Then I'll take you to the verse above later on to show you that it used a masculine pronoun to address the, the moon. So that you understand the difference when God is clarifying things for us, you have to pay attention clearly to the verses on how God is clarifying things, not how somebody is using his opinion to tell you things from the Quran. There is a difference. So pay attention clearly. This is why I put the verse on the screen so that it can help people to actually comprehend easily what I'm talking about. So God says the sun does not emerge for it to reach the moon. The sun does not emerge, yambagi laha, for it. The laha denotes the sun as a feminine pronoun. So the sun, if we are going to talk in a, in, a, in a technical sense, we can say the sun is a female and the moon is a male. But initially, people think it was vice versa. They thought the sun was a male and the moon is a female. No, vice versa, God is clarifying for us. The sun is a female and the moon is a male. You see, this is wisdom from God. So the sun does not emerge for it to reach or catch up to the moon. Nor does the night precede the day. You see the difference here. So the sun is different from what? The moon. And the moon is different from the night. And the night is different from the day. And the day is different from the sun. They are all not the same. So God says, and each float in an orbit. So each of these entities God is mentioning to us, they all have their what? Falakin. Their own orbit that they, they move through it. So we can have a night time without seeing the moon. You can have a night. Night is dark, but you don't see the moon in the sky. Then we can have a daytime, and you will not, never see the sun in the sky. But there is daytime. Right? So it is the day which reveals the sun and it is the night that you see the shining moon clearly. But even though the moon can appear in the daytime as well. So they all, they all have their own orbit to move uh, in within, right? Uh -huh. So I'm only aiding you to understand the difference here so that you don't mistake in chapter 17 verse 12 to mean that it means we have to use the sun and the moon to know the count of years and calculations. No, God never said that. So I'm coming to that. Quran chapter 17 verse 12. And this is where the verses I'm quoting will be very, very interesting. Before I will give the chance for questions and answers to explain about the Ramadan timings, right? So Quran chapter 17 verse 12. 
Quran chapter 17, verse 12. And I'm sharing the screen. Let's see what God says. God says, We have made, and we have made the night and the day as two signs. Ayatayim. Then he says, now you can see the subject is talking about what? The night and the day. It's not talking about the moon and the sun. Please, listen carefully. It's not talking about the lunar and the solar. It's talking about the day and night or the night and the day. Remember, they have their own orbits. So don't join them with the moon and the sun. They, they have nothing to do with each other. Pay attention. So God says, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنِ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْسِرَةً لِتَبْتَغُوا فَدِلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْسِيلًا you can see the verse doesn't mention anything about the sun and the moon in these verses. Nowhere. It is God clarifying his own verses. So God says, and we have made the sign, uh, the night and the day as two signs. And we wipe out the sign of the, the night and we make the sign of the, the, the day visible, mubsiratan, visibly, that you can see. So daytime, you see it clearly. Then God says, In order for daytime, we all go out to, to work. We go and seek the favor of God, the bounties. Then God says, In order to know, In order to know the number of years and the calculation. So you see, the day and night has nothing to do with the sun and the moon. Please pay attention. Because I'm building this argument to, uh, to, to, the, to the, 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 the topmost uh, point where there is no uh, cause for alarm again. Good. So we've seen Quran chapter 17 verse 12. Then God says, And everything or all things we have explained or elaborated in detail. So God says, and we have elaborated, elaborated all things in detail. So the detail here is to denote to you that God never mentioned the sun and the moon in Quran chapter 17 verse 12. It is only talking about the day and night, which has nothing to do with the moon and the sun. Pay attention. Good. So now I'm going to take you to Quran chapter 10 verse 5 and Quran chapter 36 verse 39 and then Quran chapter 2 verse 189 to tell you why we are using the lunar calendar and not the solar calendar. Pay attention. Good. So now I'm taking you to Quran, chapter 10, verse 5. And please, for those who are only relying on translations, please, I exhort you to pay, take the Arabic lesson seriously in order to know, to decipher, to know the difference on how words are used in Arabic so that you don't just rely on translations to keep lying to you. Please. Uh -huh. So I take you to Quran, chapter 10, verse 5. Salam, uh, rock syllabus. You are welcome, brother. Quran chapter 10, verse 5. And I'm sharing the screen, then you get to know what I'm saying, right? So in Quran chapter 10, verse 5, God says, Huwa lazi ja'ala shamsa diya'an. Then he says, Wa laqamara nooran wa qaddarahu manazila li ta'lamu adada sinina wal hisa. Then he says, Ma khalaka Allahu zalika illa bil haq. Then he says, You first see the ayati, the kaumi ya alamu. Now you see what God is saying. God says, Who are lazi ja'ala shamsa diya'an? He is the one who has made the sun glow. So the sun is its own light, it glows by it, itself. Right? It produces its own glowness, like lamp. So it glows. Then he says, Well, the camera nuran. Then he made the moon a light. He made the sun glow, then he made the moon light itself. Right? That's why we have the word moonlight. Good. Then he says, Wakadarahu. He used a masculine pronoun, a singular masculine pronoun. He didn't use what? A dual pronoun. When I say dual, dual means to say two things, to mention parallel of two isms. No. Wakadarahu. He didn't say wakadarahuma. 
He didn't say wakadarahima. He says wakadarahu. Which one is he talking about? It's not talking about the sun because the sun is a feminine. And then the moon is a what? Masculine. So the moon, wakadarahu, is referring to the moon. If it is the sun, it will say wakadaraha. You see? So he's referring to the moon. So he says, walakamara nuran. Then he says, wakadarahu manazila. You see? So the moon has positions that you have to pay attention to it. Right? That's why it appears like a crescent, the waxing crescent and the waning crescent. It keeps going by positions. Then it comes half, it becomes full moon, it becomes like sea, it goes. Uh, so he wakadarahu manazila. Then he says what? So that you may what? You may know the number of years and the calculation. So meaning, what should I use? I have to use the moon, not the sun. I have to use the moon in order to know the number of years and the calculation. So somebody will say, then why did God say in Quran chapter 55 verse 5? I'm coming there. I will tell you what, what we are supposed to use the sun to calculate for. Right? It's simple. I will tell you. So then, Quran chapter 10 verse 5. Then he says, Ma zalika illa bil haq. God did not create that except in truth or with the truth. Then he says, You first see the ayati li kawmi moon, And he has what? Detailed or elaborated the verses or the signs for people who know. You have to be knowledgeable to understand what God is telling you. That is why Quran chapter 6 verse 105 says, وَكَذَلِكَ الْآيَاتِ وَلِيَقُولُوا دَرَسْتَ وَلُنُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ So you need to have knowledge. So Quran chapter 10 verse 5 it is not talking about the sun as being what you use for knowing the number of years and calculation. By then, it is referring to the moon. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. Like I told you, the day and night are different from the sun and the moon. So somebody will say, then what is the purpose of the sun? I will come to that. Don't rush. I will tell you what is the purpose of the sun. Right? Good. Then we go, 36 verse 39, to show again that the moon uses a masculine as attribute, while the sun uses a feminine attribute, right? So you can research for yourself throughout the Quran and see the evidence I'm talking about, right? Good. So Quran chapter 36 verse 39, that is Surah to Yasin. Let's see what it says. And I share the screen, then you see what I'm seeing and you see what I'm reading right on chapter 36 verse 39 god says wala kamara qaddarna qaddarnahu manazila then he says hatta adal kar uljun al qadim wala kamara qaddarnahu manazila hatta adal kal urjun al qadim so he says and the moon we have estimated it in positions you see, that's how God has created the moon. So he says, we have estimated the moon. Kadarahu, kadarnahu. So you see a masculine pronoun denoting the moon. Whilst the sun has a feminine pronoun. Ha. Quran chapter 91 verse 1. Right? Good. So in this chapter, verse is talking about the moon. Walla kamara kadarnahu manazila. You see? Manazila. Then he says, Hatta Adel Kal Urjini Lakadim. Then he says, Until it returns. That means the moon, it starts like a sea, then it goes and ends like a sea. So he says, Adel Kal Urjuni Lakadim, as an what? Old palm, the, the branch of an old palm tree. You see, when you take a palm tree, for instance, for people who know what a palm tree is, like when you see the palm tree, the branch, when it falls down and it's old, it becomes like C, like this, like this. It becomes like C. So when the new moon, the, the ahilla, the crescent, when they are coming out, you see it's like C in the sky. 
When it's getting old again, you see it's like C. You see how it works. So C. So God says, Then it becomes like an old palm tree. So that is the moon. So now when they ask you about this old palm tree, when it becomes like an old palm tree, the C, what the forms it takes in, the C, what did God say we should use it for? Then now I'm going to take you to Quran chapter 2, verse 189. Quran chapter 2, verse 189. Right? I'm going to show you what we are using that C. When it appears like a C, the new moon, I'm going to show you what it is. Right? Good. So Quran verse 118. Let's see what it says. Quran chapter 2, verse 189. So God says, Yes, Alunaka Anil Ahilla. That is Ahillati. He's talking about the crescents, the new moons. Like when a new moon has is growing, you see it's crescent, right? Crescent. That is what we call the uh, Ahillat. They come, we have the waxing crescent and then the waning crescent. The waxing crescent and then the waning crescent, right? Aha. Uh -huh. As I did, I, I spoke about in one of my videos uh, lately that I posted on Facebook concerning the month of Ramadan, and I spoke about the moon, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So then God says, Yes, Aluna ke anil ahillat. Then he says, Kul, he told the messenger to say, Hiya mawakitu linas wal hajj. Hiya mawakitu linas wal hajj. They ask you about the crescents. The crescents. Ahillat. You will see many a times before Ramadan, they will tell you they are waiting for the Hilal committee. The Hilal. The word Hilal is talking about the new moon. That is the crescent. So that they go to the Hilal committee in order to know, has, have they supported the, the new moon? Has they spotted the crescent? When the crescent is appearing in the sky, everybody can see it. You don't need to go searching for it. Seriously, you are fooling yourself going out, searching for it with a uh, telescope or something. When it is time, it will appear in the sky. You will see it with your eyes, unless if you are blind. And how many blind people in the world? The ones who can see are in the majority. So when it appears, you see it like C, like this. See, it will appear in the sky. So God says, when they ask you, they ask you about the Ahilla, the crescent, say, here, mawakitu linas wal hajj. They are timings or timetables or timing devices for the what? People, mankind. And he says, and the what? Pilgrimage, the hajj. So you use the crescent to actually know the timings. You see, that is why God made manazila for it. To in order to count a month for it. According to Quran chapter 9, verse 36, he gave us 12 months since the day he created the heavens and the earth. 12 months. Quran chapter 9, verse 36. And four out of them are sacred months. And then the four out of the four sacred months, he mentioned the name of one of the sacred months, which is Ramadan, so that you can know from that it goes up to the end of Zul Hijjah. That is the end of the, of the calendar year. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So when people are not paying attention, and this is where people are being lied to and deviated and thinking that, oh, we have to use the solar calendar as well. No, I'm not saying if you want to use solar calendar, that's up to you. But when we are dealing with the godly aspect, we are supposed to use what God has instructed for us, not use your own opinion. So remember, Quran chapter 2, verse 194, Asharul haramu bishar al haram. So the sacred month must, is with the sacred month. So they go together. So after a sacred month, the next which has to come is a sacred month. So if after Ramadan, we go to what? That is Shawwal. So after Ramadan, we have Shawwal. Then we have Zulkada. Then we have Zulhijjah. Right? So now Quran chapter 2 verse 194 is giving you what? Asharul haram bil sharul haram. So when, as, exactly when you finish month of Ramadan, the next month coming is also a sacred month. Zulkada is also a sacred month. 
Zulhijjah is also a sacred month. So it's four months consecutively. Quran chapter 9, verse 36. Right? He gave us 12 months, and four of them uh, are what? Ashurul Hurum. So there is nothing like the way the Mushriks gave you. They say Muharram, they say Rajab, they say Zulkada and Zulhijjah. They, divide, they divided the sacred months. It is totally wrong. The sacred months, they go together. So that is why God actually mentioned the name of the month of Ramadan, so that when you take the calendar, you can know, okay, this is the ninth month on the Arabic, uh, the Hijr calendar. So I started counting. Sharul Haram, Bishal Haram. So I count. Ramadan, Shawwal, Zulkada, and Zulhijjah. That completes the Shaya sacred months. Simple. Don't let anybody fool you. Good. Aha. Uh -huh. So now, I took you to Quran chapter 2, verse 189, where it is talking about what? Yes, aluna ke anil ahillat. Then he says, Kul hiya mawakitu bin nas wal what? Bil wal hajj. So it is the timings device. That is the timings for the people and the what? The pilgrimage. So the ahillat comes from the moon. Because we use the manazila of the moon to know the timings of a month. So that is why we are using the lunar calendar for the godly aspect. Right? To mark the seasons. As I started by quoting the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 19. You see it there. He appointed the what? The moon for seasons. Right? Exactly. Ibrahim, Adegbete, they don't include Ramadan in the sacred, holy months, the sacred months. That is what the Mushriks do. If you ask them, what is the holiest month in Islam? They will tell you Ramadan. Out of their foolishness, if you ask them to mention the holy months for you, they will mention four without adding Ramadan inside. So you see, kaput. No reasoning. <laughs> so that's how dumb the hadith made the mushrik become. So now, the issue of the lunar calendar, let's put it aside. I've given you the necessary evidence how God has clarified concerning the issue of the lunar calendar. Now let's go to the issue of the solar calendar. What are we supposed to use the solar, the sun, for? Even though God says, well, the Shams will come out of his band for calculations, right? So what calculation are we going to use it for? So God is going to tell us. When you go to Quran chapter 17, verse 78. Quran chapter 17, verse 78. When it comes to the time of your salat, God has given you the sun to mark the time of your salat with it. You understand? He gave you the sun for calculation. So that you know the time of your salat, the time the salat al fajr will start and salat al isha will start. He gave you the, the sun so that you know. So I take you to Quran chapter 17, verse 78. God says, Akim is salata, liduluki shams ila gasaki layl. You see, then he says, wa Quran al fajr. Inna Quran al fajr kana mashhuda. So God says, and establish the salat. Liduluk, the word duluk comes from the root word da la ka. When we say da la ka, it means to fade away, to decline, to set like sunset, right? To rub something off. So if I tell you something is fading away, does it mean it's standing in the, in the highest position? No. If I tell you something is declining, let's say I have one million. And my money is still one million. Can you say my money is declining? Impossible. The mushriks will tell you, Liduluk Kisham's meaning is me, it means when the sun is in the middle of the day. <laughs> they will tell you Liduluk Kisham's means when the sun is in the middle of the day. That's how they got Zuhur Salat. It, it is totally wrong. The word Duluk doesn't mean in the middle of the day. Duluk Kisham's is when the sun is going down declining setting fading away robbing away yes that is what delaka means so god gave you the sun for calculation here liduluk is shams then he says ila the ila is a preposition telling you the sun is still ongoing that's why he used the word duluk it's a present continuous going liduluk is shams then he says ila gasaki lail so the lail has a gasak which is the twilight or which we, we can say the dusk D-U-S-K, dusk, the twilight. You see, so the sun goes ila gasaki layl. So when it goes to gasaki layl, that is where we have civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight. 
With the civil twilight, you see you still see the sun, even though it has set, but you see the, the shining. Nautical twilight, that is when it is about to disappear totally. Astronomical twilight, that is when the sun has gone down in the below the horizon. Then now nighttime totally appears, the darkness. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. So that is why God says, Walayli is a jalaha. So the layl hides the sun. You don't see it totally. It's covered. Whenever you are seeing the rays, sun rays, the rays of the sun, we don't consider that nighttime. It's still evening. Because that's why we use the word even, evening, to balance it like this. So that the sun will go below the horizon. You don't see it. Then it becomes night, right? So it, God gave us the sun here to use for the timing of the salat. Then the same sun, Quran al Fajr. You see, the Fajr times, it is the coming out of the sun which makes you know that Fajr time has ended. So he says, Quran al Fajr. The Fajr is the dawn time. That is the time before the sun appears. So what does he say? Let's define the word here. When we say dawn, dawn is the first light of day, the earliest period before sunrise. Because you start to see the reflections of the light far away coming little by little before the sun will appear. That is dawn. That's why we say daybreak. Then we have what we call layl, which is night. The time after sunset, when it's dark outside. That is what we call night. So the night time covers the sun totally. You don't see the sun anyway. Again, that is what the sun purposely is, uh, the, the night purposely is to do, to cover the sun away. You see the point? Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Good. So now we see what the sun can be used for. We can use the sun to know the timings of the salat. Yes, and it's for calculation. We, are, we can use the sun to calculate the time for that. And I've already shown you the difference. The day is different from the night. The night is different from the sun. The sun is different from the moon. The moon is different from the day. They are not the same. They all have their phallic, their orbit that they move in. So bear that in mind. That is why we are using the lunar calendar because God gave us the ahillat as a timing device. And that is the same ahillah. The crescent is what we use to know the time of Hajj. So there is nothing like solar calendar to calculate our calendar with it. No, no. Let anybody who thinks otherwise find me out for a live dialogue. We can sit down and have a dialogue on it. And if you show me where God says we should use the sun to calculate a calendar, a calendar for a year. I'm hoping for it. Okay, good. So now let's go and see again. If you go to Quran chapter 18, verse 17, God talks about the sun, the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. When it was talking about the youth in the cave, when they slept in the cave, he mentioned the issue of the sun. So the sun is purposely rising and setting, and that is the time we use for our what? Our salat that we know. The morning salat and the evening salat. And then we, the sun also has other benefits, right? So when we say be his band for calculation, yes, we are using it to calculate the time of salat as well. Yes. Good. So now let me read uh, some of the questions of and answers. Uh, some of the questions have been asked. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ginko Abdul Hamid, he says what? It says, it's never true that we say Dalaka means the sun is at the highest peak. We rather say Zawal. Or what are you trying to say? Which means when it started. Uh, are you talking to me? Or did you hear what I said clearly? I don't think you were here from the beginning. So I don't know why you're throwing this thing at me. Uh, Ginko, I think you have missing the point, right? Uh -huh. So if you say, and it's never true that we say, who, who, you and who? Are you also part of what are, those I'm talking about? Are you those who do this five salat? Uh, Ginko Abdul, are you part of those who are doing the five salat? 
Let me put my number there. You can call right now. Because it baffles me when people want to delve into a topic they don't understand what is being said. You can call the number, WhatsApp number. Uh, Ginko, Ginko Abdul Hamid, you can call the WhatsApp number. Ah, because I don't think you have understood whatever I said. Thank you very much. I was it now? Okay. Anyways, let me answer some of the questions I've been asked uh, during the week, right? Uh, let me see. Concerning Ramadan, right? Let me answer those ones. I think I have uh, time. Yeah, less than one hour to go. So let me see. Uh, some questions have been asked during the... During the week concerning Ramadan. The first one, it says, I would like to know if one can continue to eat during the astronomical twilight as it look very dark here where I am. Uh, it's a brother who is sent me this, Tujis, uh, Tofik. He says, I just noticed that today. Okay. So now let's understand the issue of the astronomy, the astronomical twilight and the, the, the this twilight issue, so that we know the time the night starts and then the time the, the night ends, right? Good. So he says he had this issue at the dawn time. So we are going to analyze. I'm going to put it on the screen. Then we are going to analyze that issue. Right, so that I break it down for you. Let me put it on the screen and we see. Uh, what I mean, let me see. It's a file, right? Uh huh. Sorry. I open it first before I share it. Sorry about that. Uh huh. This and then I share the screen. Oh, what is wrong? Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you can see the screen here. I'm addressing this uh, question I was asked. Now, based on the question, let me see. Now, based on the question I was asked, the person told me that, can he keep eating when it is at the astronomical twilight? I hope you can see it on the screen. He asked me, can he keep eating when it is uh, astronomical twilight? The answer is yes, you can keep, you can still eat when it's astronomical twilight. Yes, you can eat. And I'm going to define that. Now, when you go to Quran chapter, chapter 2, verse 187, right? When God told us the time we can eat, he says, and eat and drink until the whitish thread becomes clear to you from the blackish thread of dawn, that is al-fajr, of the fajr. Then conclude the siyam, that is the abstinence, at what? Layl, at night. So God says, and eat and drink until the whitish thread, listen to the word, whitish, whitish, abiyadu, whitish, using the superlative form, right? Whitish thread becomes clear to you from the blackish thread of what dawn that is at the dawn time so when you look at the sky based on the picture i've put here we have the blackish thread from the whitish thread now the more it keeps going up the more it changes from the night time down there if you check night time down there on the screen 
Then it goes to astronomical twilight. Then it goes to nautical twilight. Then it goes to civil twilight. You see, then it goes to daytime. So from the night, it keeps moving till it's getting white. The tread. Do you see the tread? It goes from night, then going towards astronomical. So astronomical is still part considered night still. The nautical comes in between the astronomical and the civil twilight. That is when the light is becoming visible for you of the day. That is of the Fajr time, of the dawn time. So these are classified as astronomical dawn, nautical dawn, civil dawn. Then we, we have the sunrise, the daybreak. Right? Uh -huh. So the Quran, chapter 2, verse 187, it says, And eat and drink until the whitish tread becomes clear to you from the blackish tread of dawn. So during the dawn time, we have astronomical twilight. Then we have the what? Nautical twilight. Then the civil twilight. So by the time you see the nautical twilight, that is the time you should be considering stopping to eat. Nautical twilight. Because from there you are moving to civil. Civil is just already day. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. So same goes vice versa for the night time. And I'm going to put the uh, picture here. Let me see. Yes. It goes vice versa again when it's going to the sunset. You see? So we have the day, then we have sunset, that is the civil twilight, then we have the what? Nautical twilight, then we have the astronomical twilight. So we have civil dusk, nautical dusk, and astronomical dusk. So God told us in Quran chapter 2, verse 187, he says, and eat and drink until the whitish tread becomes clear to you from the blackish tread of dawn. Then conclude or complete the siam, the fasting, at night. It didn't say at sunset. You'll be a fool to think God says sunset. Sunset in Arabic means maghrib. Quran chapter 18 verse 86. You see it there, maghrib. Maghrib al-shams. That is when the sun is setting. God didn't say you should break the fast at sunset. He says you should conclude the fasting at night, Layl. Go to Surah to Layl and see chapter 92, verse 1. Wal Layli is a Yagisha. Wal Layli is a Yagisha. By the night when it is covering, when it covers. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. It covers. And then he says, Wal Layli is a Jalaha. It covers the sun. That is chapter 91, verse what? 3 to verse 4. It covers the sun entirely. So when we say conclude the abstinence at night, so this is the twilight I'm showing you here. We have civil twilight, nautical twilight, astronomical twilight, and then the darkness itself, the night. So during the astronomical time, it's considered, yes, you can break, you can uh you can break your fast. Nautical twilight, it depends. When it's moving towards astronomical, it, the more it's moving down, the more darker it gets. So then from the position or the, posi the place, the location you are, that is when you can consider if it's already dark from the position. Because when you are looking at the sky, when it's getting dark, it starts getting dark from one position before it covers entirely. Do you see how it goes? Aha. Uh -huh. So when we have, we have the civil twilight, nautical twilight, then we have the what? astronomical twilight so let's define it when we say astronomical dawn let's say at the dawn time we have the same twilight it goes vice versa so when we say astronomical dawn or twilight astronomical dawn is the moment when the geometric center of the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon in the morning astronomical twilight is the moment when the geometric center of the sun is 18 degrees below the what the horizon in the evening so it goes vice versa do you see uh -huh. so after astronomical dusk and before astronomical dawn the sky is not illuminated by the sun so during the astronomical twilight you don't you don't see the sun you don't see any illumination from the sun sun is buried totally that time is good to break your fast we don't call that time sunset no 
Then we have the nautical twilight. At nautical twilight, the human eye finds it difficult, if not impossible, to descend traces of illumination. So during the nautical twilight, you don't see the, the sunlight, even though the, the sky hasn't completely gotten dark, but you don't see any sunlight. You see? So then to descend traces of illumination near the sunset or sunrise point of the horizon, first light after nautical dawn, but before civil dawn, then a nightfall after civil twilight, but before nautical twilight. This is how the nautical twilight works. Uh, Gingo, wait a minute. I'm explaining a point. Let me finish. If I pick your call, you interrupt. So let me pick, uh, let me finish addressing the people I'm talking to here. Then we have the, what we call, which goes the same vice versa for when it is what? Evening time getting to the night time it goes same goes vice versa when it's night time getting to the fajr time you use the same uh understanding to understand how the twilight uh works you see uh-huh yes uh -huh. Yes. Uh, okay. So let me go to another question, which was asked earlier uh, by some of my viewers. Uh, I think somebody's. Let me see if I see the. Uh, remember the question here. Somebody asked a question concerning women. Okay. She asked. She says, "Salam. Can you make a video on whether a woman should pray or not, and fast or not during menstruation?" First of all, God never said a woman should not pray when she's on a menses. God never said that. The only time prohibition of something or restriction concerning menstruation was mentioned is in Quran chapter 2, verse 222, Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, let me see if I can put the verse on the screen. Quran chapter 2, verse 222. Yeah, uh, and I can share the screen. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, Surah to Bakara, chapter 2, verse 222. And let's see what it says. So God says, and when they ask you, and they ask you about the what? Menstruation. Kul, huwa azan. Say it is what? Harmful. Then he says what? Fa'atazilu nisa'a fi fil mahid. Now you should what? Disassociate, uh, you should ad, 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 associate uh, the women during the what menstruation then god says wala takrabu hunna hatta yat hurna that is do not approach them until they have what cleansed or they have purified meaning purify themselves away from the blood that is here is talking about copulation with the women man and woman copulating with each other then he says fa iza tatahurna then he says fa atuhunna Min haythu amarakumullah. So God says, and when they have cleansed, then approach them from where God has commanded, meaning from the front, where God has made the design for you. Then he says, In Allah, in Allah, you hibbul tawabina wa you hibbul mutatahirin. So God loved those who what repent. And then he loved those who purify themselves. So this is the only instance God talk about the mahid that when the women are menstruating, you have to disassociate from them sexually. It doesn't mean when my wife comes in and she's menstruating, I have to start running away. No, not like that. You have to dissociate from them that is sexually. So then God says, and do not approach them until they have what cleansed. So then he says, when they have cleansed, then approach them from where God has commanded you, right? Aha, uh -huh. instructed for you. 
Then he says, indeed, God loved those who repent and he loved those who purify themselves. So you can see the verse. The verse is only limited or restricted to telling us concerning how we should watch our women during the menstruation or when they are not menstruating. So during the menstruation, that is when we are not, we are not supposed to copulate with them till they purify. Right? Now, when it comes to ablution, Chapter 5, verse 6, and let me share the screen also, then we understand that. Quran chapter 5, verse 6, where it says, Ya you are lazina amnu, iza kuntum ila salat, fagusuluhum uju akum, wiyakum ila limarafik, wa umsawu biru usukum, wajulakum ila likabain. So now this is about the ablution before the salat, when we are about to go for the salat. So God says, oh, you who believe, when you get out of Salat, then he said what? Wash your faces. The word gusal has to do with water. So you wash your faces. That is in your hands to the elbows. And wipe with your heads. And wipe with your legs to the what heels, under, under the, the feet, right? Then he says, junuban." When you are unclean, meaning you, you, are, you, are, you are dirty, even when you are sweating and you are smelling, it's considered junub and dirt. When you are so dirty in such a way that you are uncomfortable, it is all junub. That is junub. Then he says, That is, you have to cleanse, you have to purify, you have to wash yourself when you are junub. So meaning when a woman is also in the mahid, she can fall in the category of junub. She is unclean because the blood because of the blood. So when she purifies, which means she can go for salat, meaning after she goes for shower, everything she wears her pad and everything. And I guarantee you, when a woman is on a menses this modern day and age, and she is wearing everything and she has a pad and everything, you are sitting next to her. You can never know she's on a menses till she tells you. You see, uh huh, because she is pure. She has purified herself. What do you mean that? Oh, there's blood coming out. You, the human, the man, the man, when you go to the urinal to pee, don't you still have traces of urine in your pants? I'm asking, don't you have traces of urine dropping down from your pants? You can never tell me there's no trace of water, urine coming and touching your pants. So are you saying your salary will not be accepted? That is not the point. You understand? Because that should not be classified under Junuban. And I'm going to explain that. So God says, Then if you should be sick or upon a journey, then he says, Or one of you comes from the toilet. Then he says, Or you have touched the women, meaning sexually. Just like when Maryam told uh, the angel, Quran chapter 19, verse I think 16 to, to, 90, to 20, where she says, uh, that no man has touched me. The touch is talking about sexual touching, right? Uh -huh. Because when you sexually touch a woman, there are these mixed things that go on in the mind and the body, right? Good. So then God says, Falam tajidu ma an, and you do not find water because the water is what you have to use to what purify, to cleanse yourself when you touch a woman. You need water to bath. When you touch a woman, you need water to wash. We understand. Then God says, and So you use a pure, uh, nice field, a good field, like where there's no speech, where there's no nothing, because it's an act of a ritual that you have to what do perform that act. So we can see in the, this context. There is no way God says all when the women are on their al-mahid, they shouldn't go for salat. No, so far as she will purify, she will bath, she will be clean. She can wear her pad and go for salat. God never doesn't prohibit them from doing that. So keep that in mind, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So there is no way God says if a woman is on a mensa, she cannot perform salat. There's no way in the Quran where it says that. Somebody is asking, can I brush my teeth whilst I'm fasting? There's nothing wrong with that. You are not eating. When you are brushing your teeth, you are not going to eat. Neither are you going to drink water downwards. 
If you can do that without drinking or, or this thing, then fine. I don't see anything wrong with this. God never said it's, it's wrong. What religious are for hajir? As for filthiness, you avoid it. So you avoid filthiness. Now, we go back to what I was saying. Quran chapter 5 verse 6. Meaning a woman can perform salat so far as she has washed herself and then she is clean. She can go to the salat. Now, Quran chapter 2 verse 184. God gave us the exemptions. He says, ayam in do that. He says the fasting is, the uh, siyam is for a limited number of days. That is within the month, which is limited. Because a month has a beginning and it has an ending. So that is a limited number of days. But however, whoever is sick among you or on a journey, you can see the same instance of the salat when God is talking about the abolition. You see the instance of the what? Sick or on a journey. Then God says, for it that to me, I am in Ukhar. Then a number of other days. He didn't say then another month. He said the number of other days. Within the month, you are dealing with days. Remember, the subject started with ayam in ma'adudat. Limited number of days. It mentioned days in the beginning of the verse. Chapter 2, verse 184. So he says, so whoever among you is sick or on a journey, then a number of other days, meaning the number of other days in front of you within the month. Then God says, and for those who will endure, that is, suffer it. You can do it, but you will suffer. You struggle. You will endure the pain during the fasting. You see, so those who will suffer it is a ransom of feeding a poor person. So on the day you cannot fast. You can do it. You are not sick. You are not traveling. You, are, you can do it, but you struggle. So let's say the place you are, there is no night time, right? The sun doesn't go down. There's no night. It's either you move from there, go for holidays to another place and, and do the siyam, or where you are, you ransom by feeding a poor person. Because you can do it, but you suffer. There is no night time coming. How can you break your fast? So God has given us the options to make your life simple. You see, so you ransom by feeding a poor person. So if God can give the option of ransoming something, do you know the meaning of ransom? Now, when we say ransom, it is what? The act of freeing from captivity. Or we can say something you give in return for, for a penalty. You give in return as a compensation. Right? So God says, feed the to I'm in my skin. You ransom by feeding a poor person. Then you come and tell me that the one who is sick or who is traveling, he has to make up for the missed days of fasting. Are you nuts? If he has to make up for the missed days, why is the mention of ransom? Wouldn't I just rather ransom by feeding a poor person? Why do I need to make, make, make up for missed days? So God is now ex that, uh, the exception of people who are sick or traveling, they don't need to fast till other number of days ahead of them. Then, those who can do it, but they will struggle, like an old person, they can do it, they are not sick, but they will struggle, then they have to feed a poor person. So somebody will say, what if a woman is a, on a menses? Not all women who are on their menstrual period are sick. Listen carefully. Salam, Adam, Abdul Ramin. Some women, when they go into menstruation, they become sick. That can be exempted. She doesn't need to do the fast. When a woman is still strong, right, and she thinks she can do it, that's up to her. But if she will suffer it, then God says ransom. But if she is sick, she is exempted. There's nothing like she has to make up for the days. For it that to mean ayam in ukhar, a number of other days, meaning within the month, if she cannot fast in the beginning that she is having a menses and is making her sick, sick. Let her look out for the days ahead and then do the other fasting in the same month, Sharu Ramadan, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So then it says, then God says, and whoever volunteers well, huh? if you want to talk about khair, then God says, for who khair Allahu, then it is good for him. Any good you do during that month, it will be good for you. But God says, but to fast is better for you. 
Huh? It is better for you if you should know. To fast, to do the fastness is better for you. Because Quran chapter 2 verse 183, God says, Ya yu al lazina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam kema kutiba ala al lazina min kabalikum la allakum tatakun. So the siyam is there for you to become pious. So that God will see which of you will actually follow the commands, instructions he has given. It is during Ramadan that the righteousness of the people goes in the highest level. So by this, it can actually change you as a good person as time goes on. Even after Ramadan, you can take up that habit to be nearer to God. And that is the time you have to use to study the Quran deeply, to understand what the Quran is saying, to implement it in your life, so that you get the taqwa, the fear of God. So that is why Quran chapter 2 verse 2 says, Zalik al kitabu la raiba fi hudan lil muttaqin. That is a guidance for the what? Those who are pious. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. So let me see. So that goes back to if a woman is uh, on a menstrual period, there's no way God says she cannot do salat. If a woman is a menstrual period, there's no way God says she cannot do siyam. But however, if the menstrual period will cause her to struggle, to feel sick, then she has to exempt herself. But if she can do it, that's up to her. You understand? There's no restriction. God never said it is haram for her to do or not to do. Uh, you understand? Uh -huh. So let me answer the last question before I bring this to an, to an end. Uh, the last question says, I have a question about Ramadan and fasting. Majority of the people started fasting on 2nd April. But I didn't see the moon on this, uh, on that day. I couldn't see even the moon for nine days because the sky was not so clear and only clouds. Yesterday, 11th of April, 2022, I saw the moon, but it was like a bit more than a half. Huh? Then he says, my question is, should I begin my fasting and fast till the moon finish his cycle? Yes, you should start your, 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 your fasting already and you should use the moon as a tracking app, uh, the moon tracking app. We, when you download your app on your phone, we have a moon tracking uh, app that you can use to track moon, movement of the crescent, right? Uh -huh. uh, Sister Aisha, according to Quran chapter 2, verse 185, God says, Faman shahida min kumu shar. Shar is the month. Whoever witnesses the, the, the month, right, should fast it. So the fasting is for a month. But however, not everybody will get the chance to do the month. So that's why God used the word form and shahid minkum. And shar goes with the moon. It starts with the moon. So let's say if somebody is based in Saudi Arabia and they have spotted the crescent starting for the month, they can start their fasting. But it might take me three days to see the crescent on my side which I'm still in demand, but my days will differ from somebody's days. You see how it goes. So it is within the limited number of days within the month that we are supposed to fast. So God didn't make it that you have to fast, fast like three days, seven. He didn't say that as compared to the issue of the Hajj. Quran chapter 2 verse 196. God says those who perform the Hajj and couldn't do the animal sacrifice, they have to fast over there for three days. And when they go back home, they should fast seven days. Then God says that completes 10 days. Ashara, Kamila. So assuming if the Siam of the month of the Ramadan was also fixed in that instance, God will have said, you have to fast 30 days. Or he will say fast 29 days. He never said it that way. So it is marked by the time I spot the Shahar. That is the new moon, the crescent. That is the time I mark. And then till the time I see the waning crescent, that is the time I'll mark. So that will be the time frame I get to do my siyam. So that is why he says, Faman shahida minkum. So whoever witnesses the month among you should fast it. So that's how it goes. Uh -huh. uh, so the brother who asked the question, you should use a moon tracking app. Download it from the Google Play Store. If you are using iPhone, search it. You can get moon locator or moon tracking app. So as a last resort, 
if you cannot see it within the first three days of the month of Ramadan, then you can rely on the app to know the tracking positions of the moon so that you can start your fast. Do you understand the point? Aha, uh -huh, that is how it works. So, yeah, aha, uh -huh, so... You can pray three times, three times according to the day. Hello. Yeah, hello. Salam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, brother. Your name, your name, and where you're calling from. Uh, my name is Hakim. I'm calling from Tamale. Okay, Hakim. Nice to meet you, Hakim. Uh, you have two yeah. two questions to go. Yeah. Yeah. My first question is, uh, if like if somebody is fasting yeah. and he deliberately spoil his fasting, mm -hmm. yes, uh, he deliberately sp uh, spoil the fasting. What what is the punishment according to the Holy Quran? The answer is, that is one. Okay. Let, let me let me answer the first question. Okay, no problem, no problem. The answer is in the verse I just quoted, chapter 2, verse 184. Yes. Now, I'm going to read the answer to you. Chapter 2, right. chapter two verse 184, God is clearly telling us that yes. as for those who will suffer it, then he says, that is, you ransom by feeding a poor person. So what will cause the person to break his fast deliberately? Because maybe he's struggling. Maybe he thinks it's difficult. Maybe he thinks he can't. You are, remember, you are not doing it for people. You are doing it for you and for God. So if I'm struggling and I can't, why should I be scared of the people instead of just going to eat? Because I can't. So mine is to eat and then feed a poor person. Do you see how simple it is? Yes. We don't say you intentionally break. You Listen to the verse. And as for those who will suffer it, it's a ransom of feeding a poor person. And whoever volunteers good, then is good for him. But to fast is better for you if you should know. So anybody who intentionally break his fast, it, it means he doesn't know the betterment of the fasting. He intentionally broke it. That's up to him. He has to ransom. But do you think a correct believer will break his fast just like that? No. So if he is not a correct believer, that's up to him. What are you supposed to do? There's no nothing like a, a blame game. Remember, Quran no. chapter 2, verse 183. The fasting is prescribed for believers. Uh, so if the person is not a believer, that's up to him. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, what's the second question? Is it compulsory that we have to fast 29 or 30 days? No, it's not. Okay. It's not. Okay. It's not compulsory. Even though God says we should fast the month, but it's based on the sighting of the crescent. We are using the crescent as a timing device. Yes, aluna ke anila ahilla kul hiya mawaki tuli nas walhaj. So if you are using the timing device, the crescent as a timing device, may it be Ghana might see it one day before I see it. May it be they might see the, the new moon three days before I see it. You see how it goes. So from the time yeah. I see the new moon, that is the my calculation till the month ends. So okay. it, sometimes it doesn't go exactly to, uh, 30 days. Sometimes you might get 29 days, 28 days, 27 days. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be 30 days. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that is your answer to your question. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. And, uh, okay. I say two questions, no problem. No, you can ask. You have one more. Ask. Yeah. And if there's a, if you if you do the fasting and you don't pray, you miss even one prayer in a day that, that your fasting will be nullified. Is it true in the Quran? Bro, uh, brother, I, I gave you yeah. the answer earlier by telling you fasting is for believers. 
Do, yeah. you, do you know who a true believer is? Those who are submitted for Allah. No, I'm not talking about a Muslim. A believer. Okay. Do you know who a true believer unless, is? Unless you tell me. Okay, you can find it in Quran chapter 8, verse 2 to verse 4. Quran chapter 8, verse 2 to verse 4. And I'm going to tell you who a true believer is. The true okay. believers, that is, the believers are only those whom when God is mentioned, their hearts are fearful. And when his verses are recited to them, they increase in faith and rely on their Lord. They are the ones who yeah. establish the salat. And from what we yeah. have provided them, they what? Disperse. Those are the true yeah. believers. For them are degrees at their Lord, as well as forgiveness and general sustenance. So yeah. a, a true believer knows the criteria of what God has commanded him. From the exception yeah. of sleeping, a yeah. believer will not let a salat pass him. From the exception yes. of sleeping. If you are sleeping and the salat pass you, there is no blame on you. Because you are in the yeah. sakara. Yes, there is no blame on you. Yeah. If somebody says, yeah. when you are sleeping and the salat pass you and you have to be punished for it, ask him, the youth, the boys, uh, the youth who were who slept in the cave for 309 years. At their time, according to Quran chapter 18, verse 9 to verse 21, there was a masjid in their time, in their era. So according to this uh, scholars telling you that you have to be blamed for missing a salat when you are sleeping, ask them, the 309 years this youth slept, are they going to be punished? Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank you very much. May God welcome. bless you. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you for calling. God bless you so much. Thank you. And Salam thank, you for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And you too. Salam. Yeah. Uh, let me let me read some of the questions asked here before I drop because I've done over two hours, which is too much. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I bring the topic to an end. I'm very, very, very exhausted for two and a half hours to three hours, and I'm not drinking any water. I've used a lot of energy. I only have about one hour, 15 minutes to break my fast, and my salat time is also up. So I need to do perform my Isha salat. Then I can get ready before my kids come back home. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Uh, as I broke down the issue of the lunar solar calendar, we only have a lunar calendar according to the Quran. I've cleared the misconception of the solar calendar. God never asked you to use the sun to calculate the calendar. But instead, he gave you the moon to calculate the calendar with it. So thank you very much. So, ba'ana rabbi izzati amma isifun. Wassalamu ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Yeah, thank you very much, Rebet Jones. Uh, thank you, Sharif Karim. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you, Mawia. Nagode. Baba Sir Nagan Kanagode Kore. Salamu alaikum. Everybody, Sister Aisha, Abdul Jalil, uh, Salis, uh, Liman, Imrana, all of you. Thank you for the support and thank you for coming as well. And let me play this guy's video before I end the topic. I think uh, I played before I started. I'm going to play it. So this is where I leave the topic, and God bless you all. May we end Ramadan in peace, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. To you. Rasul, ya Rabb. If that's, all of this wasn't bad enough, the Messenger himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, speaks to Allah directly. Ya Rabb, inna qawm ittakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. This nation of mine, no doubt about it, they took this Qur'an, هذا Qur'an, even there, there's a beauty in even the use of the word هذا here, as opposed to ذلك. Like when you start reciting Qur'an in the beginning, Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. Here Allah does not say ذلك Qur'an, He says هذا Qur'an, هذا للقريب. This Qur'an was right here, it was right in front of you, and you still wouldn't take it seriously. And the Messenger on Judgment Day sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complains, this nation of mine took this Qur'an, not that Qur'an, this Qur'an, one of the other rhetorical benefits, badaghi benefits of the word hadha in this ayah is on judgment day, it will be like the Qur'an will be brought as a witness. You know how in court you bring the witness and then the witness is, or the evidence is brought and you point at the evidence and say, this is the evidence that that guy is a criminal. So the, ev the evidence itself will be the Qur'an on judgment day. Your case is bad enough as it is. 
And then the Qur'an is brought as the witness, and the attorney making, bringing the evidence as the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's pointing at the Qur'an and saying, these people, this nation of mine, they took this Qur'an, mahjura, they took it mahjuran. Hajara, they say in Arabic, taraka shay'an. Oh, uh, it's hajartahu hajran, yani taraktahu, aghfaltahu. You made something forgotten. You completely ignored something. You left it way behind. I think even the Urdu speakers here know the word hijra. Everybody knows the word hijra, to migrate something. The, the ayah doesn't even say matrukan. Matrukan means left behind. Mahjuran means left way behind. They didn't just leave the Qur'an, they left it way behind. They, had, they weren't even close. They just migrated away, away, away from it. And I, I want to remind myself and all of you today, the character that the Qur'an wants from us, if we are away from that, even though we're reciting the Qur'an, it's still a hijrah from the Qur'an. It's still a hijrah from the Qur'an. We're migrating away from the Qur'an if we're reciting it and we're not seeing any change in our character. That's, that's the quality of Bani Israel. And that's why this, this by the way is Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th Surah of the Qur'an. It's not a long surah, so you can read it in translation when you go home. But what's remarkable about this surah, this is the middle of it. When you get to the end of it, the whole ending is about what kind of character is required from a Muslim. What should the personality of a Muslim look like? Why is that mentioned? When the messenger complained they abandoned the Qur'an. Because the person who does not abandon the Qur'an has a different kind of personality. The personality is different, their character is different. Their actions are different. Even who they hang out with is different. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا In the same surah, when they walk by useless conversation, they walk by in a dignified way, they don't get entangled in it. They, they, they stay away from useless company even. It affects every part of their personality. That's the abandonment of the Qur'an. I feel that the ummah is becoming, and you and I are becoming more and more and more guilty of, and we have to be worried about it.